today's talk is about the fairness in machine learning. I uh, have a little bit reduced the, the, the title because the previous title is too long. That is how unlabeled data to improve, how we can use it to improve the fairness of machine learning. So actually I have two topics I want to share with, uh, with the team. Um, the first one is how to achieve fairness. And the second thing is that uh, how to achieve the, uh, both fairness and privacy. As you know that I'm working on the security and privacy. The private machine learning is my prior research area. So one thing I'm thinking is that, yes, we need to achieve the fairness, but we need to pay the <clears throat> cost of accuracy and privacy and how to achieve both of them. So the first thing is that I would like to have a brief introduction on what is the fairness <clears throat> on machine learning. Actually, the fairness is normally derived from the, um, the, the database or the model bias. And what is the bias? Here is a very famous example. When people trying to use a model to predict if a defendant should receive a bad ball. So that's, they use the machine, the machine learning model to make the decision, to help to make the decision. And people find that there is a huge gap between the black and the white for the wrong label high risk for the white is a, around 23 percent but for the black it increased it doubled and for the wrong label the low risk and for the white is pretty high but for the black people is quite low so this machine learning this model lead to a bias result so in that case we say that this model is unfair and we also have some other examples and in healthcare system and the bias or normally occurs for the uh, um, health need and less money is spent on black patients who have the same level of need. So that's an another issue on the care system, the unfair machine learning prediction model. So how and why this Lead to an un, uh, lead to an unfair model or biased results. So we hope that a fair learning system gives no discrimination decision to people, no matter the gender, the ages, the ratios, or or all of other things with different attributes. Uh, and for example we have to ensure a model to be equal accurate on white and black population. Here I use a figure to show the example. If we have a data set and we have the uh, standard machine learning model and a fair machine learning model, if the data sets include bias, including the individual bias, institutional bias, or some, some all kinds of biases, the standard machine learning model has a very higher probability to give an unfair decision. So for example, the accuracy on male is in equal to accuracy on female. If we use the fair machine learning model, and we hope that the model can give a fair decision, for example, for the male and the female, they have the same accuracy. So that's our target on the fair machine learning model. And how does those bias affect the training data? And actually, actually, the unfair is coming from the bias. There are two types of bias we can meet in current training data. One is the representational bias. This, this bias coming from the sample, sample process. When we, have, when we sample in training data and the sample method or the, uh, is, is skewed or not representative of entire possible population. For example, if we only use the female or male's data to train a model and the model will have discrimination on the male and the female. Another part is the historical bias and the data capture, the data captured originally universal data include the bias, uh, bias and unfairness has, that has already existed in our society. So in that case, we need to uh, diminish the representation date bias and historical bias. Um, and here are some examples for the bias in, on a data set. Um, one example is from the facial recognition system. If we collect data, facial data, we 
normally there's 80 percent of white people and maybe um 70 percent of those are male so this is bias this is bias from the from a data set and if if we actually for our universal data we actually have half and half half female and half male but when we sample the data and collect the photos and maybe we have bias another example is that we trying to create some um, fake data sets to train our model we have very less uh, labeled data in that case and we simulate some data sets to train a model in that case for example a name is created uh, we use a fake profile and the the model the model when we train the model and other names are more likely to be considered as a fake uh, and if we are carefully and add more representative data, and this may help to decrease the bias. So my first topic is about how we can achieve fairness by using those unlabeled data or how we can um, improve the fairness by uh, increase the training data set. In the current research on the fairness, um, I roughly divide them into three directions. One is pre-processing, which means that we uh, manipulate the data sets to improve the fairness. Uh, another direction is in-processing. In, <clears throat> in this kind of direction, we adjust our models or optimization methods. And post-processing, that we ad adjust the model, the predict model to achieve the fairness. So there's a roughly three types of methods. Uh, and normally they, mo they mainly focus on the supervised learning and unsupervised learning. But there are then uh, existing problems on the fairness is that um, the trade-off between the accuracy and the fairness. Uh, just like I mentioned in the background, we can increase the training data sets or uh, decrease the representative bias on the training data set to improve the fairness. Uh, however, normally the fairness will pay the cost of accuracy of the model. Yeah, that's the, that's the accuracy cost. And how we can get the trade-off between accuracy and the fairness. Okay, uh, definitely we need to pay the cost of accuracy, but we hope that the accuracy won't decrease too much is still acceptable, even we use a fair machine learning model. So in this case, can we apply semi-supervised learning in this case? So the motivation is that in previous study shows, already shows that if we can increase the size of the training set, it may lead to a better trade-off between fairness and accuracy. So one way is to increase the training set. And uh, how we can do that, how we can do that, because we know that the training data set for machine learning is, uh, is quite rare and we, we need to pay a lot of money to collect the training data, label the training data. So in that case, is, is it possible for us to use those unlabeled data during the fairness process? So that's the key motivation of the first, first topic. So we, we think that we use the semi-supervised learning to train an un labeled data and then we can get get some pseudo labels and use those pseudo labels to improve the fairness of the model so that's the uh, uh, our thinking so before i propose the method i would like to introduce the metrics uh, actually there are lots of metrics in the fairness on different aspects um if we focus on the um, uh, demographic fairness and we have the first metric demographic parity it requires that the possibility that predict results from a classifier be independent of sensitive attribute so what it means is sensitive attributes normally the gender the age the ratio might be the sensitive attribute we want that our prediction is independent of those sensitive attributes so here is the um, demographic matrix we have the probability a is the uh, sensitive attribute no matter the a equal to one or zero no matter and we predict and label y equal to one we have the same probability that we predict a label equal to one and this 
probability, we define it as the gamma, as the demographic parity. We want the gamma one and gamma zero as close as each other. So um, as much as possible. So that's the demographic parity. And based on that, the discrimin discrimination level can be defined by the demographic parity. That is the difference between gamma zero and gamma one. And the, the, the probability, the difference of those probabilities should be quite small. Uh, and the, a larger tau may indicate a larger discrimination level. We don't want to do that. We want to diminish the discrim discrimination level in our model. So that is the very famous Bernice metric. I only put this metric here. And actually, there are lots of other metrics to, ev to evaluate the fairness. And the current research cannot cover all of them to meet with the requirements of all of those fairness metrics because some of those metrics are conflict to each other. So in, in, in one research, normally the researcher or the model will fo only focus one or two metrics. And here I just uh, uh, to make the presentation brief, I only introduce one very famous metric about the demographic metric. Okay, so that's the metric. And the next step is that how we can label those unlabeled data we use as pseudo labeling is a, is a widely used semi-supervised learning method. It's not, not a unique method proposed by a group. We just apply some other methods. The key is to use the labeled data to predict the label or, of unlabeled data. So the method is quite straightforward. We have a model, we design a model and use the model to train the model with labeled data. And based, based on that, we predict labels for the unlabeled data and we get the pseudo labeled data. And then we combine the pseudo labeled data with the labeled data together to retrain the model. So that's the basic idea of the unsupervised learning. So in our method, I, here is the overview of the method. We actually, we actually have divided it into three pieces. The first thing is that where to sample. Here we got the unlabeled data and used the sampled unlabeled data to train a model and get the pseudo label data, data sets and move to the next piece, how to sample. And we got the new training data sets with pseudo label data and label data. Combine, they, combine them together and sample from this new training data sets. We use a fair sampled method to, to, to sample from the new training data. And, and based on that, we train one to three or K models, here I only present three, K model, K based models to get a ensemble learning to make the final decision. So three pieces. And actually those three pieces may represent one type of uh, arrows. Um, here I would like to present what is the bias, variance and noise. And the bias, bias is that how well the model fit the, the, the data. So we can make different model choice to reduct the bias. And the variance, we can increase the data sets to improve the variance and noise. Noise, we know that for the machine learning uh, is an irreducible error and independent to sample size and the model, we can hardly to decrease the noise. So there's a three type of, uh, uh, of uh, noise and bias and uh, variance. And in this over in this three pieces of method, we try to diminish those two types of different noises. And for the first part, pseudo labeling, pseudo labeling is to construct a new training data set, use super, pseudo labeling, the algorithm is here. So I don't want to go too deep on the algorithm. And the second part, second part is that when we create a new data set new data sets, we still cannot guarantee that this new data sets can lead to a fair model. We only increase the size. We didn't um, diminish the bias. So the sec in the second piece, we try to sample equally from different groups. So in this case, we divide the data sets into different groups based on the sensitive attribute, based on the sensitive attribute with the combination of prediction 
of the Y prediction. So from those three, uh, four groups, from those four groups, we sample equally on those four groups to make sure that we can diminish the, the, the representative bias. So that's the second, second piece. And the last piece, how to train the model, we used a fair ensemble learning to combine all things together. So the training, the, the training model can be all type of uh, classification methods. And finally, we get the, uh, um, the final prediction. And this final predictor normally can achieve a fair prediction compa comparing with previous models. So actually, um, for based on those three pieces, we can um, decrease the discrimination in bias and in variance and in noise. So uh, I, I won't put too much emphasis on the theoretical analyze. And in the paper, we present a lot of equations and analyze to prove that. So uh, here, I only focus that the uh, we have we decreased the different discrimination in different noises. Okay, uh, on the uh, experimental results, and uh, we can have the trade-off, get a trade-off between the accuracy and discrimination level. Um, here is the trade-off. The, the red thing, the uh, red line represent the accuracy and the blue line represent the discrimination level. And we can see that even though we get some um, some sacrifice on the accuracy, um, and we, we can in, improve the discrimination level um, significantly. Okay, so here's the, the example. The, the experimental results shows that we get a good good trade off. And here is the impact of sample size on the accuracy and discrimination level, and it shows that. And increasing in the sampling size can lead to increasing in accuracy and may help to reduce the dis discrimination level. Um, and here's the, actually, this is a common sense. If we can improve the sample size, definitely we can improve the accuracy. But the problem is that how we can sample from the, from the, uh, um, the universal, from the universal to get the good discrimination level or to decrease the discrimination level. So here the example results shows that we can in, in achieve both. And the compare, comparison is between the uh, fair machine learning model and unfair machine learning model. And it shows that the fairness enhanced sampling method can outperform the uh, original method. So those three different angles shows that we can improve the fairness by using those unlabeled data. Okay. So uh, here is the summary of the first topic. We use the unlabeled data to achieve the fairness of uh, machine learning, but I'm not quite satisfied with the output because as you know that I'm working on the privacy and the security. So I would like to see what is the link between the fairness, security and privacy. I want to dig something more. So here is actually, Actually, the second topic and I'm, I'm, I'm more uh, interested in is that how to achieve both fairness and privacy. So that's the, I would like to move the second topic. Uh, as we know that machine learning, in addition to fairness and machine learning also meet with another problem is about the privacy breach. Actually meet with a, lots of a privacy attacks, membership attack, model inversion attack, and memorized attack, all types of attacks. And what we want to do as a researcher, what we want to do is to propose a private machine learning model. And this is a very um, interesting topic that has been developed for many, many years. And the motivation of this topic is that we want to link the privacy and the fairness. We know that the privacy can degrade the accuracy, similar to fairness. If we want to achieve a fair, uh, sorry, a private machine learning model, and the accuracy will decrease a little bit, definitely. Same to the fairness, right? Have to pay the cost of the accuracy. 
if the both metrics of both goals will decrease, degrade the accuracy, there's some is there any link between the privacy and the fairness? Is there any link? Actually, we can't actually we can't find some links. A biased data set has has higher possibility to disclose data actually in the view of privacy. If we have a uniform sampled data set and with a biased data set, if we compare them together, we can make the conclusion that a biased data set may have higher possibility to be uh, to have disclosed uh, have uh, breached by the some private attack so here is the link might be the link between the privacy and the fairness so in another view if we can decrease the bias of the data sets maybe we can improve the fairness with the privacy so we can achieve both both so that's the motivation of the uh, of this research problem. Uh, so here, the fairness we find that the fairness does not seem to be addressed directly. Rather, fairness might be better managed by treating it as a byproduct of training with privacy. So that that's a very interesting discovery. Uh, we can use a private mo privacy model, machine learning model, by using the differential privacy plus SGD, named the DBS DPSGD. Here's, this is a very famous privacy method that combined with deep learning model uh, and proposed um, five years ago, not proposed by our group, proposed by a very famous group on the uh, differential privacy and deep learning. So DPSGD currently is a very famous method, a standard method for the deep learning method, <clears throat> deep learning models. We apply this kind of privacy model in our research <clears throat> and observe the impact on the DBSGD on, um, and the fairness on the accuracy. So we observe that uh, here I present some results. If we see the look at the uh, left hand side accuracy figure, we can see definitely. If we apply this kind of private method, DBS, DPSGD in, deep learn, in a deep learning model, the accuracy will decrease, will be decreased. So this is, the, um, this is a quite uh, straightforward observation. Our private method, normally the private method will pay the cost on the accuracy. And the second thing is that if we apply DB, DPSGD, in a model, we estimate the fairness. We can see that the uh, it can decrease decrease the demographic parity, which means that the fairness is in, decreased as well, decreased as well. And we, if we compare some other metrics, and we can see that the DBSGD also has some impact on the on the fairness, and it shows quite unstable unstable on the on those curves you can see that if we compare sgd and dbsgd and dpsgd is quite unstable so here's the observation on the on the private method and the fairness they have the link and they have the impact on the accuracy and they are un, quite unstable so what we can do if we can if we got the uh, those kind of observations and we what is it possible for us to tr to train the model in different process so here's the method we propose we want to early stop the uh, training process which means that uh, if we go back to it if we can stop the training on a specific epoch maybe we can get a better result so we propose the uh, different type of stopping criterion uh, the first thing is that we can stop the training when the accuracy has a relative increase and discrimination level has a relative decrease at epoch t after training is converged. So this is the first early stopping criterion. We make an, a metric to estimate the how we can measure the accuracy and discrimination level and combine them together. If we feel that we get a better trade-off between the 
uh, accuracy and discrimination, and then we can stop it. And the second criterion um, is early stop criterion is about the sign of change of the dis discrimination level. When the discrimination level has decreased in a consecutive strips, and we think that it's time for us to stop it. So we propose two early stop criterion to make sure that we can get a better um, trade-off of fairness, private, and the accuracy. Here's the method. The method is quite simple. We train on the training set and evaluate the per example error on the validation set in every epoch, in every epoch, and estimate if those two criterion has been achieved and stop the training as soon as the stopping criterion is satisfied. And that's the, this is the second step. The second step is the most uh, important part to make sure that we can get the, uh, we can get a better result. And then use the network weights from previous step as the model. Okay, previous step as the model, as the final model, and use the model on the test set to get the final result to predict the final result. And based on that method, uh, and actually the key idea of this method is that we don't need to train the model in too much epoch because the following epoch may decrease, may decrease the uh, private level or the accuracy level if we use the DBSGB, DBSGB. So here's the key idea of the method. We stop the training process a little bit earlier. And here's the example to show the results, show the results. One is that we use the DB, DPSGD, one is that we don't use it. And we compare the results. Uh, we, we can observe that accuracy, actually, the accuracy decreased, decreased a little bit, but still acceptable. And the fairness can be improved. And also the uh, privacy level also can be improved. And the example shows the stopping criterion has the uh, valuable part in the experiment. So um, here's the conclusion of the second, second topic. Actually, the, uh, we observe that unsupervised learning can help to improve the fairness of machine learning model. That is quite obvious, okay? We can, we can achieve a better result if we use some unlabeled data. And based on the observation, we feel that the fairness has the link to the privacy violation. Actually, they have the link. This is because a biased data set has higher possibility to disclosure the private sensitive data. So that's why we can link the privacy and the fairness. So our second topic is about how to link them. However, However, we only use examples to show the results. Let me go back to the example. Uh, show, use the experiment and case study and examples to show the observations. Um, actually, we didn't dig out any theoretical link between the accuracy, fairness, and the privacy. Yeah, we, we haven't found that. We believe there is an underlying theoretical part of those two things, two things, maybe the next step, if we can use the, um, if we can use some explainable machine learning method, we can dig out the link between privacy, fairness, and also the, the security, also the sec security. So that's the uh, initial research on the, on the, on the second topic. And uh, I, some of our PhD students have already do that. Uh, I would like to uh, dig a little bit more on the experiment. Uh, just like I mentioned, I used the DPSGD, DPSGD to achieve a private machine learning method and how, how it can um, help to help on the, on the fairness. This is because the DB in each epoch, in each epoch, DBSGD will consume a private budget, which means that they need to add noise to each epoch. If we can stop a little bit earlier, it can help us to save the privacy budget, save the privacy budget, so that we add less noises to the privacy model. So that's why we can 
um, can maintain the accuracy in the following epochs. So that's the uh, that's the property of uh, DB, DPSGD. Okay. And what is the next? What is the next? Uh, actually, for the next step, for the next step, if we can find the link between the privacy, security, and the fairness, okay, if we can find the link, then is it possible for us to propose a tax on the privacy? Okay, proposed a tax on the privacy. So, and as well as the attack on the fairness. Actually, we have, or we have started doing that. Uh, and the, uh, the author of uh, the previous two papers, one of my PhD students has already uh, proposed a method that can attack on the fairness, attack the fairness. We can use the same attack method on the, on the privacy, use the same attack method on the security on the model of security, we apply those attacks on the, uh, we can adapt, um, adapt those methods to fit them to the privacy, uh, to the fairness, and then we can, uh, we can decrease the fair of machine learning model. So this might be an one possible uh, cybersecurity directions on the fairness. Uh, I think that's, that's the two parts of my talk a little bit earlier than I expected. Uh, and uh, any, thank you, and any questions.